So that's it. <laughs> We're on Facebook Live. So now I'll tell you about the Bialy Rebbe. That's an amazing story. Um, in the beginning of my tshuva, first time I, uh, a friend of mine introduced me to the Bialy Rebbe, and he asked me to 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 come with him to meet a very righteous man uh, that uh, in Jerusalem in Givat Shaul. And I said, okay, you know what? I'll uh, I'll join you. And I came, and um, thank God, to meet the Bialy Rebbe always uh, you need to make a, wait at least two hours or so. There's a very long line, he's accepting many people. And uh, But uh, Hashem saw that I don't have the vessels for that, so he brought me with a person that was very close to him, and we went very fast. In the beginning of uh, our conversation, I opened my heart and I told him a few things about myself. And then during our conversation, I, it was like that he dozed off, like he fell asleep. It was late at night and it seems to me like he fell asleep. And I'm talking to him and I'm thinking to myself, come on, like the, the person is asleep. Like, Maybe you can go and let him rest a little bit. He had a long day. So I told him, I think it's uh, okay, you know, it will be okay. And I, I was about to leave. And then he looked at me, opened his eyes and said, for me there is no difference if my eyes are closed or open, if I'm awake or I'm asleep. I hear every word of yours. It was very hard for me to believe in that, I tell you the truth. We're talking about 15 years ago or so. It was very hard for me to believe in that. But he told me things that were very important and I felt like that person is very powerful. But I didn't know much. I Okay, it was a weird experience to talk with him. That's what I felt. One of the things that uh, happened also over there was that uh, when I was young I made tattoos. I had three big tattoos. One small actually and two big ones. And when I came to him, I complained on that. I told him that my tshuva is very hard and now I'm stuck with those tattoos. Shalom Aleichem, Danny. So I told him that I was very frustrated and I told him that I, I, I'm very upset and why I need to go through those difficulties. And then he looked at me and he told me, are you trying to blame someone else except of yourself on your avonot, on your crimes? Like, who are you pointing? What are you, who are you referring to? What, who you have problem with? You did it yourself. And I was quiet. So it was a, a weird experience for me to meet with him the first time. And it took me a long time to go again to see him. But then I met him in a Brit Milah of a friend of mine, the same person that brought me in, in the first time to him. And uh, when I was there, so the Bial Rebbe, he looked at me when he was about to leave the place. And then he looked at my friend and he held my hand and he looked at my friend and he told him, you need to know that that person is a very righteous man on me. So my friend, he said, yes, I know. And like, you know, between friends, there is a joke on Balet Shuva that three Balet Shuva are walking in the street and someone is calling them Tzadik, righteous, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> like, it's obvious, like righteous, of course. Like, So my friend said, yes, of course, and, and this and that. But um, something weird happened to me maybe eight years later after that time that he told my friend that I'm righteous that I was doing it bodedut and thank God I stopped my drugs and uh, medicines long before of my tshuva so I'm clean for a long time so you can count on what that I'm saying that is real but in one of my bodeduyot I was talking to Hashem and I, I closed my eyes and suddenly I heard a, a voice from inside a very clear loud voice that said Atat Sadiq you are righteous and it was like I woke up from that voice and to tell you on myself that I'm righteous I cannot because I don't know but to tell you that that's one of my experiences it, it's it's a thing it happened after a while when I came to the Bialy Rebbe again so he opened many many cards for me 
and he was telling me about it but the duyot prayers that I had with Hashem and I looked at him and I told him Rebbe you're telling me things that only me and Hashem we know I was there alone it was in a graveyard in Bnei Brak in the street Chazonish it was the middle of the night 3 a.m. And, and you're quoting my Ibadadriyot, and you know exactly what, what I was saying to Hashem. What's going on? He said, look, I won't tell you how I got that information, but I want you to know what Hashem wants you to do with that gift that you received. And then he started guiding me and telling me things that I need to do with my life. I don't have no explanation for that except of Divine Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh. And I don't need those proofs for myself and not for you because it's 100% clear that that huge righteous man got Divine Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh. I saw it many times. He knew so many things about myself and also aimed to the point, like 100% precise to the point to tell me the exact things that was right. like to the center of the problem, to tell me exactly what's the advice for me, what will heal me, what will give me the, the answer, what will give me the power, the strength to, to move forward and to succeed. One of the things, um, in, uh, in, uh, in the Brit Milah, of what's the baby's name? Israel. Of Israel. In Shikhe, um, that we live long life, Amen. in the Karlibach Shul, I came over there because Nicolo uh, asked me to come. If I if I'm able to come, he wanted me to come, and also the Bial Rebbe was there. So it was like two, three, three gifts in one place. So I I ran fast over there, and we came on time. <laughs> something very unique not only for me that I'm very special in being late all of the time just also in the morning to Manhattan and to make it on time it's a uh, and also with the Biale blessing of always being late <laughs> I remember once I saw him praying Mincha at 9 30 in Israel it's like it never happens you cannot pray Mincha it's like probably you can but he did <laughs> with a minyan at 9.30 p.m. It's like it's almost the middle of the night in Israel. And he davened mincha. Calmly, slowly, quietly, everything. Like, he knows what he's doing and he's doing it with Hashem. So, I was very impressed by something that happened in that Brit Milah of Israel Sheikh here. That when I was there, I came with a very big request in my heart. Something that the Biale Rebbe was guiding me on to do and to achieve and to succeed with it. And I saw only the opposite signs for that thing. Like, you want to do it, you want to succeed in that, but all the doors are closed, all the ways are blocked, like, no salvation in the view. And I came to him very sad, very broken, very frustrated, and really don't know what to do. And, uh, when I said, first of all, it was important for him that I will sit close by, to close to him, and he, he moved everyone. There was a person that it was a little bit hard for him that, uh, that, that the Biala Rebbe took me to sit close to him. He wanted to be close, so the Biala looked at him, Rebbe looked at him and told him, you have a problem with control a little bit, he told him. He said, you have a problem with control. Like, relax. It's okay, like, he had things to do and he always brings people. He knows exactly who to bring and when and with who to speak and who to reject for now and then he brings him later and like, he knows exactly what he's doing. So, he took me to sit close to him and then he told me, I, it, for me it was very hard to, to even to understand what I saw, but he made an oath to me. He said, Ani nishba. And that's something that it's like you, you almost cannot hear. He said, Ani nishba, that you will see what that I promised to you before of the, the coming Rosh Hashanah, before of Rosh Hashanah. 
And then he looked at me and he said, do you realize what I just did? <laughs> and he starts slapping himself like that. Always he's slapping everyone else. Always. He's hitting everyone else except of himself. This time he was slapping himself and he hit himself so strong. Like I said, do you realize what I just did? You saw what I did. I did it for you. I did it for you. Like to make an oath to say Ani Nishba, that's something very big. And you see that that person, that huge righteous man, he's got that Avat Israel love for, for people so deep in his heart that he couldn't care less even to risk himself. I told him once about myself, I told him, listen, in the beginning of my tshuva, I tried for many years to stay clean, always to guard my eyes, to eat only mehadrin, the highest levels of ashgacha, and to, to, to finish Shabbat in the latest hour that I can, and not to run to eat after the fast. And I tried in mikveh every day and before of prayer, and every chumrah, everything that I could find, I would try to do it as a regular natural process of a Baal Tshuva to try to redeem himself from the darkness, from his past. But with the years, with the time, and with the fact that I'm going out all of the time and teaching and guiding people outside, it's very hard. And also that I see that it's not always right to be so strict and to be so hard on yourself. Because when you're getting hard on yourself, it's one thing. But when you have a family, and when you have students that are trying to follow you and you're speeding up, even if you're able to do it, people are falling and it's because of you now. Because they want to hold you, they want to be close to you, they're your family, it can be your wife, it can be your children. And you're being strict with them, that's it, they, it's a recipe for a failure. It's, there is a guaranteed failure in the end of that process. And it's a very big conflict for a person that wants to come close to Hashem and from the other side, he needs to give up on things that are very important. At least he feels that they are very important. <laughs> what is important in the eyes of Hashem, Hashem said, there are things that are light for me and you made them critical. You took them too seriously. And there are things that are very serious for me and you made them light. Ah, okay, you know. So the truth is that we don't realize always what is the right thing and what is the most important thing for Hashem. For sure we know Derech Eretz Kadmala Torah and stuff like that. So for one of the things that I was very impressed by the Bial Rebbe is that I came to him uh, maybe one year ago and I told him, listen, the truth is that I'm not able to hold on in the level that I was a few years ago. I was always waking up early, I was going davening nets and now I can come back from a class at 3 a.m. I'm not able to function until 8, 9, maybe 10 even some days. I like, I can't. My body is collapsing. I don't have the power to do too much. I need to, 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 to feel myself and to go with that. You go, we've been to, to Arizona. We've been to, to Alabama. We gave classes in those places. It's very hard to keep Chalav Israel. So, for an example, so you want to keep it, okay, great. But your children, you cannot torture them because you want. And if someone else have a different opinion, great, you can go with that. I don't mind. But I felt that it's ruining and destroying more than it gives. So I came to him and I asked him about it. I told him, I feel that I'm being too strict on myself and I feel we're not falling from Kashrut. It's not that we're violating rules of Torah. We're just not holding as high as we assume that we're supposed to be. So he told me, a person cannot waste his time on those things when he's got a purpose in his life. When a person doesn't have purpose in his life, great. But when you have a purpose, you cannot make a purpose from every small thing. If there is something, let's say now you have something in your Shlom Bait. You have an issue with your wife, she's not happy, she's miserable, she's suffering, she is going down. So now you cannot be as strict as you were with three prayers a day in a minyan, with doing whatever you want to do, learn the same time in Beit Midrash, four hours, six hours like before. You cannot. 
some person that you will ask will tell you, no, you need to do more. Okay. But from my life experience, I saw that it doesn't work like that. So if you don't have something urgent, something strong, something meaningful that really you need to focus in, so you can do a lot of things. You have time, you can spend six hours in Beit Midrash every day and to pray three times a day in the, in the Minyan and you can do whatever, a lot of things. You can do Chatzot and wake up before dawn and do Mikveh. Great, if you're a Bachu, great. But when you have five children and you're married and people got needs, people got thoughts, you need to bring money to the house, you have family, whatever. There are things that getting more important in the eyes of Hashem. So when I realized that really he's, the Rebbe is pushing me further and further to understand that the purpose that the person got in his life, that's the most important thing, it gave me a big, a huge push. Because many of us, many times in our life, we're finding ourselves lost, confused, don't know what to choose. And you don't have no one to ask sometimes. We have three aspects in Kriyat Yam Suf. When Hashem opened the sea, He opened the sea for our nation by three righteous people. One of them by the merit of three righteous people. One of them was Yosef HaTzadik. He was a righteous man and he passed away already, but his bed was over there in front of the sea. And the verse is saying, Hayam Ra'av Hayanos, that the sea saw the holiness of Yosef HaTzadik, so it ran away from him. So it opened to the sides that the bed of Yosef will walk on dry land. Great, that's one of the righteous people. The second one is Moshe Rabbeinu, that it's written, Bokeh Hayam Lifne Moshe, that Hashem opened the sea in front of Moshe for, the Moshe, for Moshe, by the merit of Moshe. Moshe was the live rabbi, of Am Israel in that day, in those days, there was a third person. His name was Nachshon ben Aminadav. Nachshon ben Aminadav, no one knew him. Maybe some people knew him. He wasn't as famous as Moshe Rabbeinu, for sure not like Yosef HaTzadik. Nachshon ben Aminadav. What Nachshon ben Aminadav was doing? Nachshon ben Aminadav jumped into the sea, walked in the water, and when the water reached to his mouth and he starts swallowing water, coughing, choking, then Hashem opened the sea by the merit of Nachshon ben Aminadav. So for every one of us, there are three ways that Hashem will bring a salvation for us. One is by the merit of the deceased righteous man, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, the, uh, the, whoever you're going to believe in, the ancestors, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, by the merit of our ancestors, Moshe Rabbeinu, whatever, you believe in a certain righteous man and you walking under his light, under his guiding lines, great. By his merit, you can be redeemed. That's one aspect. Second aspect, it's a live Rebbe. It's a holy righteous man like the Biala Rebbe, other people will meet other righteous people and they will say, yeah, that's the righteous man of the generation. I believe in him. I go to him. Great. By the merit of that teacher, of that live Rebbe, you can be answered. He can bring down salvations to you. By being a loyal student to him, you can make wonders in the world. The third aspect, it's Nachshon ben Aminadav. That's a person that is standing in front of the Red Sea and he doesn't have a clue what to do with his life. Like we can find ourselves five minutes before of Shabbat, don't know what to do. Your wife can ask you, is it allowed to put it on the, on the, on the, on the stove? Not allowed. Allowed to put it on the blech? Not allowed. What to do? I don't know. I don't have a clue. Now you need to believe that Hashem Barach is telling you, go, I will be with you. And the thing is, that that tool, that power that you have in your hand is even stronger than Moshe's tool and than Yosef HaTzadik's tool. Why? Because on Yosef HaTzadik it's written, Bemakom she, be, on Yosef HaTzadik it's written that Yosef was, the, um, um, on Yosef it's written Ish, um, what's the verse? Do you remember? 
on Yosef that he was Ish. Um, Yosef Ish Matzliach, that he was a successful man. He was succeeding. So he, it's written on him, on Yosef, Ish Matzliach. He was a successful man. On Moshe Rabbeinu it's written, that Ish Moshe, he was humble, also man. But on Nachshon Ben Aminadav, he doesn't written Ish. He doesn't mention that he is a man. So I was thinking about that and Hashem gave me that understanding. It's written, Bemakom she'en ish, in a place that the word ish, man, doesn't written, Hishtadeliot ish, you should be that man. That's not Shon ben Aminadav. He is that person that didn't have that man to back him up. He was looking at Moshe, it's okay, it's working. No, no, we have others. You take it. It's live, we can make mistake live, it's okay. <laughs> So he found himself standing all alone. Even though that Moshe Rabbeinu is standing on the mountain and praying, great, it's amazing, we're counting on you, Moshe. But where is the salvation? We can't see. Okay, the bed of Yosef at Sadiq and his holy body is over there waiting. Yeah, we're counting on your salvation, on your merit. But where, where is the miracles? He didn't have an answer. So he had to jump into the sea and to bring the salvation on his own, for himself, for his family. And he jumped into the sea. And the evidence, the proof for the fact that he was even higher than Moshe and than Yosef, it's because that when Moshe Rabbeinu prayed to Hashem and asked for salvation, Hashem rebuked him and told him, Why are you screaming now? Why are you praying now? Tell Am Yisrael to go ahead. And that's exactly what the Nachshon Ben Aminadav was doing. So Hashem rebuked Moshe on not being like Nachshon Ben Aminadav. The Mida of confidence to count on Hashem, that Hashem is with you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, it's a higher level even than to stand and pray 40 days, 6 hours, 24 hours, 40 days straight with no break, with no stop. It's even higher than that. What it means to count on Hashem? To count on Hashem, it means to count on the fact that Hashem is with you. Even if you are drowning, Hashem is with you. Even if you go in the valley of death, Hashem is with you. Even if you hit rock bottom in hell, Hashem is with you. That's confidence. Confidence, it's not that you're counting on your tefillot, on your prayers. Is that you're counting on the loving kindness, on the endless mercy of the Creator to redeem you and to save you and to protect you, even when you are so low that you're drowning. Even when you don't have no one else to save you, no one to protect you, no one to give you a hand, you need to count on Hashem, that Hashem will back you up. And even if it will be in the world to come, the Gemara is telling us, Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak said, Gdola avera lishma mi mitzvah shelo lishma. A sin for Hashem can be greater than a mitzvah, but not for Hashem, for another reason. Now you're keeping Shabbat, but you're not really doing it for Hashem. You're afraid of your father-in-law, you want to stay religious, you want to be a, a, how you call it, fake from birth? Fruit from birth. <laughs> Fruit from birth. You want to you wanna play that game and you keep Shabbat. What's going on? <laughs> Guys, you want to be a nice actor so you decided to keep Shabbat. It's good. You'll have a reward on the Shabbat itself. You will be rewarded. But if you don't know what to do, like that example we brought, that your wife, she asks you, am I allowed to put that pot on the blech for sh in Shabbat? Do I need something else? Can I stir it? Can I cover it? Am I allowed to take it out of the, of the, of the oven? Uh, questions, in middle of Shabbat, you don't have no one to call. Now let's say that you were wrong. And you, only because you don't want her to be upset, not for yourself that you're afraid of the screamings, for Hashem, you really don't want her to feel no sorrow. And you tell her, listen, you can take it out. Don't worry. And the answer is no. You were wrong. You made a mistake in Shabbat. It's a sin. You violated Shabbat in that way. But it is greater than to keep mitzvah of keeping Shabbat, but not for Hashem. And who gonna tell you 
only you can feel, only you can ask yourself, what was my intention? What was my meaning? What was my reason to sin, to make mistake, to fail, to fall? Sometimes you choose not to daven in a minyan. Sometimes you choose not to learn this day. Sometimes you choose to pass mikveh. Sometimes you choose to do something that can be even worse than those things that we mentioned. If your heart is aimed to Hashem, I'm telling you it's greater than to keep mitzvot. Because Rahmana li babai, the Creator, He wants your heart. He wants your heart and He feels your heart. And He wants you to be honest. And when you're honest, that's what Hashem wants from you. So it's more than enough. It's perfect. Every person in this world finds himself doing things that are against the book. And I'll bring you an example, a proof for that, from the biggest one of them all. I want to see where is it written that you allowed to take the first Bible that been given from heaven and to smash it down to the ground and to break it. For which reason you allow to tear the first Bible been written by Hashem Barach, handmade by Hashem. I want to see the rabbi that will find the reason to do that and will be able to do that to risk himself so much. Who can do that? Except of Aish Moshe, Anav Moshe, the humble one. Moshe, on which commandment you were counting breaking the holy tablets? He felt that that was the right thing to do. Because he saw that to give the Bible, the holy tablets to Am Israel in those moments were a promised disaster for our nation. Because we were worshipping idols, we were not in the level to accept yoke of heaven and the holy tablets in that time. And to bring back the holy tablets to Hashem Barach, that's a very insulting thing. You cannot do that. So he decided not to destroy us and not to destroy Hashem's honor. So I'm going to destroy myself. And that's what he did. And he did something that only after the fact Hashem came to him and told him, Yeshar Shibarta. I praise you for doing that. There was no commandment. No one guided him to do something like that. Just he realized that he should learn from the Creator himself. That the Creator himself, he threw the truth from heaven down to the ground. But Ashlechemet Arza. When the Midah of Truth came to Hashem and told him, don't create human beings, don't create people, Hashem Yitbarach asked her, why? So she answered, Midah of Truth, the Truth, Hashem desired the Truth, Hashem Elokechem Emet, God of Truth. He heard the Truth saying that people are liars, and they are, that's the Truth, people are liars. And he heard that Truth, so he took the Truth and threw it down to the ground and broke it to pieces. But now, the truth will grow from the ground because the real truth was to reveal His mercy on those liars, on those people, on us. And if He would have listened to Midata Emet, we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be able to experience that godliness in the way that he found that is suitable, that it's the right way, that it's the appropriate way to reveal his godliness, his greatness through the thickness and the darkness of this world. That's how he realized will be the right way and we wouldn't experience it if he would listen to the truth. So Hashem Ibrahim himself decided to throw away the truth and to find a higher truth, the real truth, the divine truth, the truth that only you can find inside of yourself and there is no teacher, no rabbi in the world that will guide you to find that truth because you must find it yourself. Righteous people like the Bial Rebbe that we mentioned, those are people that can tell you search for the truth, search for your own truth until you're going to find it. And you will find it, but it depends in you. It depends in your true search after the faith, after the truth, after the real will of the Creator. 
If I would try to be so strict, I would be divorced today. I wouldn't hold on in my marriage. I wouldn't have the 50,000 followers that I have online. I wouldn't make those wonderful classes. I wouldn't spend time in Manhattan after the fast. I would look for something else to do, right? Because to go to Manhattan in the middle of the night, it's not the most. But when you see that Hashem Barach has got a will and that His will is more important than your will and you have the merit from heaven to understand His will, you must count on yourself and to dare even to violate some rules. Like that the Mishnah in Brachot is saying, Et la asot la Hashem eferu toratecha. When it's time to do for Hashem it barach, sometimes you need to violate some rules of the Torah. And it's for Hashem. It's not that we're going down somehow. That's how you're rising. A person asked me today, he had to eat because he went to a doctor and the doctor told him, you must eat. So he called me broken, sad. He said, I wanted to fast and now I feel so bad with myself that I ate. I told him, listen, why do you want to fast? The reason you want to fast, it's only because that that's the will of Hashem, right? Hashem commanded us by Rabbanan and you realize that that's the will of Hashem, so you chose to fast. Great, wonderful, amazing. But now Hashem set another rule and He said that if a doctor tells you that you're not allowed to fast, you must eat. So now, you need to go and be happy to eat your meal. And that's the will of Hashem because Hashem set that rule. Sometimes you need to count on yourself to understand that it's okay to be who that you are in the eyes of Hashem. Hashem created us with our lackings, with our weaknesses, with our defects, defaults, with our lack of knowledge. And He wants you to choose. And the time to choose is when you don't know the answer. When you know the answer, you're free from choosing. You just go. You don't choose in which way to go home. You know, I need to take right and then right and that's it, I'm home. You're not choosing anything, you just go. It's an automatic pilot on. And you just go home, you don't think. But when you don't know the way, when you're not sure, then you choose. And the main purpose of us is to choose Hashem. So how are you going to choose Hashem when you don't know? You need to feel. You need to count on your own feelings. You must count on yourself. You must count on Hashem that He will be there with you even if you will make a mistake. And that it's not a mistake when you aim to heaven. When your intentions were to do something for Hashem, there are no mistakes anymore. The mistakes are only when your heart is not aimed to Hashem. Then, even if you are keeping so-called Torah mitzvot, it's fake. You're fake from birth. It's not a real Judaism, it's not a real flaming fire that pulls you closer and closer to Hashem in Barach. That's something that the children are falling off the derech and that the wife, she's 24 hours on Facebook. No one finds life in your Judaism, in your songs of Shabbat, in your rules, in being so strict and hard on them. They don't want it. Why they don't want it? Because they don't find life over there. Why? Because you misinterpret or chose wrong and you're not connecting yourself to the source of life, to Hashem Barak. That He commanded us to choose life. To choose life, it means to count on yourself that you can tell what is reviving you, what gives you happiness. And what that doesn't do it for you, you need to solve that, that question. You need to understand that, that situation. You're not supposed to accept it. To all of those people that will say, okay, so if Shabbat is, doesn't make me happy. If to eat kosher doesn't make me happy, so I should go and be happy all day long. I want to party. Should I? So I said, you need to go and check exactly if Masim Chaza what that happiness makes you. If your intentions are really to serve Hashem and you found something that makes you happy, yes, you must follow that. But if you found that the things that are making you happy are taking you, drifting you away from Hashem, so, don't do that because we are talking and coming out of that point that we are trying to come closer and closer to Hashem. So everything that I said is only when your intentions are to serve Hashem, to commit yourself to Hashem, to do as much as you can to come closer to Him. When you find that, 
as your main purpose in life, even you made a mistake, if you made a mistake, Hashem will bring you back to the right route, to the right way, reroute you, will bring you back to the path. That's the will, the power of the will that will bring you back to the right way. So we need to follow our heart, we need to follow those righteous people, righteous ones, we need to follow the voice of heaven, to believe in ourselves, it's to believe in Hashem. You know that song or that I'm going to sing it alone? Let's let them see where the... That's uh, that where uh, we gave that class. You were here with us in Manhattan. Thank you very much for watching us live. Be well and happy. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.